And finally, the drum heads are here. The new tom heads. <gasps> coded. It's time to go coded, baby. So, um, yeah, the new tom heads are here. And a couple of sticks, because uh, I needed new ones. So, uh, today we're swapping out the Evans EC2 heads that I've had on my toms for ages to the Evans G2 coded. Uh, I've been rolling with the EC2s because for, for a birch kit that I have that has a lot of attack, it was better just to kind of roll with that and try to force warmth into it. But I'm actually going to give that a try today. I'm going to put the coated heads on, open them up a lot, probably no muffling or anything, and just kind of see where it goes. So, let's get started. Let's have a look at what the toms are sounding like right now. As I said, these are EC2, Evans EC2 heads. Uh, we're specifically looking at the rack toms. Well, the floor tom as well. I'm just going to change the tuning on it a little bit, try to get it to open up slightly more to fit better into the context where, where everything else will be more opened up. Uh, but the head will stay, and so I'm changing the, the heads on the rack toms basically. Um, the 10 inch rack tom has a res Evans resonant glass head underneath it already. Uh, the 12 inch tom does not. It actually has a genera, what's it called, the, the genera dry. Uh, it's actually a coated head and it's a battered head. But I was just experimenting. It has little vent holes around it. Uh, so it actually sounds good, but uh, as a resonant head, on, it works specifically for this tom actually pretty well. Uh, but I want it to be the same. So coated G2s on top and resonant glass on the bottom, but right now these are EC2s. So let's have a little look at what they sound like right now. So this is with the, the overheads, uh, through mic, sorry, changed around a little, and the snare mic and everything, and I'll demo the snare quickly as well. Uh, so the sound might be a little different, and this will be completely unmixed. So no processing or, or anything from what you heard before, so it might be a little different. But here's what the tom sounds like right now. Sounds pretty good actually, but they have they have a lot of punch. Obviously, they're, it's a birch kit, so the, the the toms naturally have a lot of punch, and they're short stack, so they're a little, at least the rack toms are short stack, so they're not as deep. Uh, so the punch is really prominent, but the attack is almost too much. Uh, so previously, I've just been running with these heads almost to emphasize emphasize that because instead of trying to force the kit to sound like something. It doesn't naturally want to sound like, if you, if you see what I mean. I, I just kind of roll with it. <clears throat> but now I'm going to try actually opening it up and see what happens with coated heads. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I actually like the sound of these, but I don't think it will blend too well with the sound that I'm going for, so hence the change. But here's what the snare drum sounds like right now. Here I've raised the pitch a bit from before. This snare is a 13x7 uh, King Drums custom snare, and it sounds the best i found when tuned pretty high. So I let some of the overtones stay, it's just half a drum tack on there, and it sounds really good. the heads. So previously when I've tuned my toms I usually started with the bottom head with the resonant side and I would tune that at first I would tune it up to the pitch that I like for the specific drum and then I would usually tune it like turn actually crank it up like a quarter of a turn more so it ends up being slightly higher than the pitch I ultimately want. Then I go and then I yeah make sure that all the lugs are equal in tension and that they all sound the same. Then I move over to the batter side, and I would uh, tune that head up to where the drum kind of sounds good to me. And that's that usually works, because I've been tuning the bottom head higher than the top head. So, you see, if I start with the bottom head, and I tune it to a pitch I like, and then slightly higher, 
uh, and then tune the, the batter head up, then when the drum sounds good, it's usually uh, it's usually like where I wanted it to be in the first place before I cranked the bottom head up a little more. See what I mean? Because um, then I will have that relationship where the drum sounds in the pitch that I originally wanted it to be, but since the bottom head is slightly tr slightly tighter, it gets a little shorter sustain and a little more punch. And since, as I said, I've been rolling with the punch theme for these these toms before in this kit, so uh, that's how I usually did it. But now I'm thinking things might change, so I'm gonna put on the coated head coated heads here in a second and change the the uh, the resonant side on the 12 inch tom to start with probably. And then I'm probably going to do kind of the same thing and see if that works, but um, I have this feeling I'll probably end up not actually having the bottom, the resonant side higher than the batter side. But we'll see. Uh, I'm trying. I'm going for an open sound here, a lot of warmth, uh, but then again it is a birch kit, it has naturally a bit more punch, so we'll see what happens. Alright, so first things first, I started with the 12 inch rack tom, tuned the resonant side up to a pitch that I liked, and then slightly more. And I, then I let it sit there, went over to the batter side, did the same thing there, and then I actually cranked that up even more, and I pushed down on it really hard to make sure that the head really set, so that when I hit it and when I play it later, it doesn't detune after like one day. So I, you know, take my fist like this with both hands and kind of push down on it, uh, just to let it set. So now I'm at the point where I've done that, so let's move on to the 10 inch tom. And while you're changing head if you, heads, if you're going to do that anytime soon, uh, I actually, I always use like an old towel or something just to clean the rims, like the bearing edges, because there's often a lot of dust and stuff, and that can really mess with your tuning if it, it once it gets pretty bad. So, um, yeah, just grab a towel and clean that stuff out, and then let's move on. And there we go. Both toms are tuned, but they are tuned higher than I than I want them to be because I'm letting the heads set a little bit. So let's see. Here it's like they're kind of they're tuned a lot, like really high, and they're not. I haven't done like the fine tuning on them, so they're they really don't sound that good right now. And that's not the point either. I'm just letting the heads set. So uh, I'm putting them on the kit right now, and. Uh, one thing to note is that drums do sound different uh, away from the kit than when they're on the kit. So don't get, don't spend too much fine tuning when, like here, sitting in the couch like I am. Uh, but actually, do the fine tuning once they're on the stands and mounted on the kit. So that's what I'm gonna do now. All right. So now I've finished tuning the drums, uh, the rack toms. They're on the kit, all ready to go. And I spent quite some time uh, doing the fine adjustments because I've had. I've had a little trouble with these toms that once I get them to a good pitch and a good sound and the attack and everything sounds great, they often sing a little too much when I'm playing the bass drum. So when I'm playing the whole kit, it kind of, you know, it, the sympathetic ring gets a little too much. I don't mind a little, uh, but it gets a little too much. So it's a lot of fine tuning and I often, I, like if you, if I, I would tap every single lug on the top, uh, on the batter head right now, they wouldn't all even sound the same. Because I had to detune like some of them slightly just to get rid of a little bit of the ring. Uh, but eventually it's taken take some time, but it's, uh, it's now done. I think they sound great. They have a lot more warmth than before. And I've raised the pitch overall a bit from before it too. Because I used to have them kind of low tuned again to get rid of some of that ring and really emphasize on the smack and attack of them. Um, but now they sound great. So I had to put half a drum tack on 12 inch tom. Because uh, I've always struggled a little with the 12-inch size, for whatever reason I can't get it really... I mean, it's a little uneven, you can sort of hear the, the tone kind of going, uh, you know, it's, it, it doesn't get perfect. No matter how I do it, I can't get it right. So, half a drum tack on there, solve the problems, and uh, let's hear what they sound like. I'll leave the snare on, the snares on, just so you can hear, yeah, hear everything truthfully. So, here they are. actually touched the floor tom nor the bass drum yet. I'm thinking I'm running out of time here so I gotta head home soon but tomorrow I will, uh, I, I will well tonight rather, I will actually 
listened through, I've recorded some stuff, so I've listened through everything and uh, tweak the mix a little, start with some very light EQ and just sort of mess with it. And then I'll sort of see if the bass drum, I mean the bass drum sounds great as it is, uh, it's just a matter of if it fits in this new mix. Same thing with the floor tom, but I'm, I'll see if I have to make any changes and I'll make those tomorrow. And um, But for now I think this sounds great, so uh, I'll catch you all tomorrow with another update and uh, we'll see where everything goes.